We are awakening together. This is our weekly gathering we hold online. For more information, visit our website, awakening-together.org. We'd love to see you there. Thank you, Marisol. Good morning, everybody. Beauties, nice to see you. Glad to be here with you. and Welcome to our Sunday gathering. <clears throat> I'm enjoying the first break in a heat wave that we've had for probably triple digits for almost 12 to 14 days. So it is a real nice respite here. Proof of this too shall pass. And I'm very grateful for that. So we are going to go ahead and um, have our opening song played and everybody gets a chance to greet each other on the chat board. So Marisol, if you want to play our opener, that'd be awesome. I'm going to go ahead and read our um, statement of purpose and a core value. <clears throat> this is our statement of purpose. We are an assembly of equals joined in common purpose, awakening to one true self. Within an appearance of many faiths, many cultures, and many symbols, we seek to discern one truth and to rest in its embrace. And then um, we're always asked to um, pick a core value that we feel is kind of highlighted. And it was, and I picked um, core value number one, not necessarily about because of the topic that I chose or even the content of the topic, but I was just feeling at the time when this was coming about how this just explains my incredible gratitude towards awakening together. And I just, I, I just felt that that's the one I wanted to highlight, that we trust everyone is led by unique inner guidance to one experience called awakening, which is realization of one true self, and we live this value by supporting one another on different paths to awakening. And it just really struck me as I was, you know, preparing for a homily, there's just kind of a lot of steps that we go through. And, <clears throat> and I just recognize what an incredible gift it is to have this process um, where each of us is kind of getting these little prompts as to, you know, what we're going to share, what the message is going to be, and it seems real personal at the time. And yet by the time I go through that process and discover that it really is something that I needed to hear and that when I share it, everybody says, oh, that was perfect. That's just what I needed. And it just really reminds me that this is just one journey um, and we just support each other. And it's, and it's a beautiful thing. So I'm just really grateful for that um, today. So that's why I chose it. And now we're going to go to announcements. And I believe I am inviting Sammy to make our first announcement this morning. Sammy, it's all yours. Very good. Then we are going to move in to our opening song. Um, our opening song is John Mayer's Gravity. It's him performing live. I I love John Mayer and I, I love watching someone play a guitar when it just kind of looks like they're channeling stuff, you know? It's just like they're just this open and they just allow the music to come through them. I just, I love watching that. So he's a good example of that. And then also that what this song represents for me is not just the idea of gravity, but it's the idea of that pull, that um, that pull of resistance, the pull of the conditioning, the pull of the habits, all that kind of stuff. And you know, my topic is on discipline, which kind of intuitively, you know, for me, the idea of discipline is something to apply to help um, mitigate the pull, right? So, um, but that's what the, the song is here to kind of highlight is you think of it as 
gravity, but just that stuff in the world that um, kind of pulls us away from the truth of who we are. So Marisol is going to play gravity. Thank you, Marisol. See, I love our, our I love our Sunday gatherings. I love our music selection. That's a good Sunday start right there. <clears throat> and I love the, you know, the the demonstration of the that pull of gravity, that stuff that we deal with on a daily basis, that tug that's trying to pull us away from the light. And then he just at the very end is just keep us where the light is, keep us where the light is. That's uh, that's what we do. So now we'll say a little prayer, help get me settled down after that a little bit. I discovered this morning that, you know, without this nervous system that's kind of designed to keep us all so safe, it'd be really easy to be a human being. But with that, it kind of becomes a challenge. So let's say a prayer, settle me down. Dear Father, I thank you. I thank you for awakening. Thank you for this process of healing that we have all invited and we all agreed to. May we be gifted with the grace and the discernment to open up to the guidance we each need during this time together. Use me as needed. I just desire to be helpful, to be present, to be a vehicle for your message, for your healing, and for your love. Thank you, and so it is. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Our reading today is um, from the teachings of Inner Ramana. It is um, the love of discipline. And my dear friend, Laura Joy, is going to read for us. And we just, her and I discussed yesterday that it's a short reading. And so we just kind of wanted to do it meditatively. So she's going to read it um, two times for us. We're going to go through it. Um, and just everybody just kind of soak in this beautiful stuff. And um, when I discovered that this was going to be the topic, I knew automatically what the reading was going to be. And I didn't go read it. So um, I've read it many times, but I didn't to prepare. So it's going to be um, kind of fresh and new for me. So once that's done, then we're just going to kind of unpack it and we can all kind of do that together. So. Laura, thank you so much for joining us and reading for us. And um, once again, it starts on page 69 if you have Inner Romana. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Hey, everybody. The love of discipline. Today, I will talk about discipline. Discipline is a dirty word to the mind. It screams lack of freedom, control, and extends ideas of being forced to do things you do not really want to do. But I ask you to look at the idea of discipline, quote unquote, again, and ask, who is the I that has these ideas? Who is the I that feels beaten down by the idea of discipline. Right now, it is as if two eyes live within you. It is time we begin to look at these two eyes now. One eye is the false thought, the false idea of who you are. The other eye is best described now as your true heart. One reason for learning the difference between these two eyes 
is so that you can learn to distinguish the difference between the eye that speaks for what you want and the eye that sounds like you. But in truth, it is an imposter. Let's look again at the idea of discipline. I have told you that discipline means consistency. You know that you want the consistent experience of God without end and without distraction. And you also know that another, that the consistent practice brings this experience. So you see, you love it. You are grateful for it. You want with your whole heart to embrace it. It is the false eye that wants to throw this idea away. It is the false eye that resists and tells you that you hate discipline. This is why it is helpful to question the false eye thought that poses as you. This thought is literally an obstacle to the experience of self. This false identification is everything that stands in the way of you knowing you. And if you continue to listen to it and continue to believe it, as if its statements are your thoughts, then you continue to miss out on the experience of your truth. The I thought must be questioned and it must be seen that this thought isn't you. Let's talk about the love of discipline. Discipline is like a roadway lined with beautiful flowers trees and green pastures to a destination that is literally more beautiful than your imagination. Who wouldn't want to take this road? And as they travel, embrace every moment of the beautiful and amazing journey. This is discipline. It is consistently applying your devotion. It is lovingly loving your love. It is giving yourself exactly what you want. Questioning the I thought that disagrees with discipline is like checking the map to make sure you don't leave this lovely road for a dry and dusty and bumpy one that heads off into the desert, away from the lusciousness of your love. Follow your heart is more than just a saying. When you can hear your true heart calling, following your heart is literally following a beacon home. And it will lead you there straight away if you remember that the beacon and the true eye are one. Starting again. Deep breath. The love of discipline. Today, I will talk about discipline. Discipline is a dirty word to the mind. It screams, lack of freedom, control, and extends ideas of being forced to do things you do not really want to do. But I ask you to look at this idea of discipline again and ask, who is the I that has these ideas? Who is the I feels beaten down by the idea of discipline. 
right now, it is as if two eyes live within you. It is time we begin to look at these two eyes now. One eye is the false thought, the false idea of who you are. The other eye is best described now as your true heart. One reason for learning the difference between these two eyes is so you can learn to distinguish the difference between the eye that speaks for what you want and the eye that sounds like you. But in truth, it is an imposter. Let's look again at the idea of discipline. I have told you that discipline means consistency. You know that you want the consistent experience of God without end and without distraction. And you also know that consistent practice brings you this experience. So you see, you love it. You are grateful for it. You want with your whole heart to embrace it. It is the false I that wants to throw this idea away. It is the false I that resists and tells you that you hate discipline. This is why it is helpful to question the false I thought that poses as you. This thought is literally an obstacle to the experience of self. This false identification is everything that stands in the way of you knowing you. And if you continue to listen to it and continue to believe it as if its statements are your thoughts, then you continue to miss out on the experience of your truth. The I thought must be questioned and it must be seen that this thought isn't you. Let's talk about the love of discipline. Discipline is like a roadway line lined with beautiful flowers and trees and green pastures to a destination that is literally more beautiful than your imagination. Who wouldn't want to take this road? And as they travel, embrace every moment of the beautiful and amazing journey. This is discipline. It is consistently applying your devotion. It is lovingly loving your love. It is giving yourself exactly what you want. Questioning the I thought that disagrees with discipline is like checking the map to make sure you don't leave this lovely road for a dry and dusty and bumpy one that heads off into the desert, away from the lusciousness of your love. Follow your heart is more than just a saying. When you can hear your true heart calling, following your heart is literally following a beacon home. And it will lead you there straight away if you remember that the beacon and the true I are one. Thank you so much, Laura Joy. Appreciate it very, very much. It was beautiful, calming, lovely. <laughs> so there we have it. And, you know, I, I said it all. It always does. And then I get to just, I don't know exactly what, except. Tune in to a little bit of my own experience about it. And um, 
you know, that what came through so much right now as we were reading it is, you know, that idea of two eyes within there, you know, two eyes within this experience. And they are opposed in um, only what they want. And <clears throat> being able to see that clear, um, I, you know, I can see that uh, that discipline truly is tied more to our spiritual aspirations, our true desires um, than what I always have associated with it. So, I mean, part of this whole practice, right, is, you, you know, I know in my in my daily life, I go through life and I hear things, I read things, and I think I have an understanding of what those things are. What I don't always know is what the understanding that Kelly has and what it's operating on. And that is what, that's that conditioning, I think, more than anything else. So what I did was I spent a day this week just, um, I think it, it's kind of my version of uh, mind dump that I've heard, um, I've heard Rhoda and both Anne kind of talk about it. Didn't have a pen and a paper, but it's kind of a meditative mind dump, right? So I, I just kind of sit there, close my eyes and introduce a word and then just watch the show basically what what is there with the introduction of the word and so the clearing started with this practice and it was just the word discipline and and what does that what does that bring up for Kelly and because the truth is that I can read this section of inner Ramana a thousand times and um, it still just stays on the surface, right? Because what, what I associate with that word deep down is what my relationship with it will be. So the beautiful road lined with, you know, beautiful flowers and all that kind of stuff is not accessible to me as long as my association with discipline remains in that early condition mode so you know we can go back of course it's it's childhood ideas that are brought up with that with that word immediately it's um it is punishment so that's what the you know the the name of this was is it practice or punishment because there's in, this intellectual spiritual student that knows that discipline is about practice right um but once again deep down it's it's not about that right so it brought up the idea of and it's funny because it's still the same thing right it, i mean even as a child being being um disciplined i.e punished for something it's about a management of behavior, you know, and that is what what that's what always brought about the um, in in my case, it was it was spanking. That's um, I, my stepfather was very authoritative and a disciplinarian, they would call it. So um, there, the behavior was often around fibbing right and i and i would <laughs> i would tell lies to get out of trouble right and um once i got caught then that and but i was always confused as a kid is it the is it the thing that i lied about doing the problem or the lie i could never quite get that straight right but either way once i got caught then there was um a spanking to be had so that was the first layer of discipline um, is um, is punishment for a behavior that some outside source, some authority um, 
wanted changed. And so they would apply this idea of discipline. So that was the first level. And then later on, as an as an adolescent and becoming an athlete, um, then it was having this, quote, discipline um, to go through these grueling workouts, right? And, um, and I had some coaches that were, um, I, I believe, lacked complete any compassion whatsoever, right? And so once again, it was this, you know, to try and take a chunky teenager um, and turn her into a lean basketball player. I mean, once again, it was this outside authority that was trying to um, control and manage the behavior to get it to a goal that they wanted. <clears throat> and um, that would, you know, bring up just this incredible rebellion, for sure. Um, this incredible inner dialogue of not being enough, right? Because there always had to be this out, this output that was 20 pounds lighter than what I currently was. And it was very spoken. I mean, they didn't hide it at all. It was like, you have to, if you want to do this, you have to drop this and this is the way you're going to do it. And so the, the diet was modified significantly. And, um, the so the calorie intake was changed and the a level of my amount of energy was you know increased in having to do that so once again it was that external thing <clears throat> and it wasn't until a um, couple things happened one was when i got into recovery i read um I grist for the mill, Ram Das. And there was a statement that he made in there that was the first time this external thing ever got rearranged for me. And he, and it was simple. He was talking about the discipline of practice, right? So it was the first time I kind of equated, oh, discipline is not this action taking place from an external source trying to manage um, my behavior. This is a practice, discipline as a practice, like he equated it to a martial art, right? So you're just learning something new. And that was the first time I'd ever went, oh my God, it's got this whole different meaning than what it was for me. Um, and he said something beautiful in there uh, that has never left me. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but I'm pretty sure that the, the content is true. Um, he was talking about the, the practice of meditation and sitting, um, sitting meditation in specifics. And, you know, he talked that we go through these periods where we think, we still think that the, the, um, the request for discipline is being asked by the guru or the teacher or whatever. Um, but then we eventually come to the place where we see clearly that it is something that is um, demanded of us. Demanded is a strong word, but he, that's the one he used. But I understood the content demanded of us by us. And finally, for the first time, there is nothing external that is applying the pressure that says you need to do this in order to conform to something it finally sat with me that oh this is something I do because it's something I want for myself and that makes all the difference now, because this conditioning is so deep in me about that discipline is about an external authority figure telling me that I need to do something and this incredible need still in the conditioning for approval, 
says, oh, I will do this for the approval, it still gets hijacked from time to time, even with spiritual practice. So, um, you know, I, my relationship with meditation has always been a challenge. <clears throat> because somewhere in my mind, I, you know, I, I've heard it recommended, right? 20 minutes a day. So it's a recommendation. It's a suggestion. And in my mind, it gets turned around to, it's a, it's, it's demanded of me by some external, you know, teacher, authority, even in spiritual land. And so that is what I need to do. So it still has that tendency to get kind of twisted for me. Um, but it is finally landing for me once again, that this is what I want. And it, and it's that simple that what I want is, um, my current spiritual affirmation is and aspiration is um, wanting to heal the mind and remember God. And that's the most simple way I can put it. I want to remember who I am in as many moments during the course of a day as I can, right? Moment to moment, remember that uh, the essence of who I am is love, that the essence of who I am is joy, that there is peace, um, that there is safety admits um, a very crazy world, um, that I'm here for a time and um, that it's not my home, but I'm here for a time because ultimately I wanted the experience of doing this. That's the ultimate truth. And so, um, but if I have any choice in the matter as to what that experience is going to be, it seems um, that it would be wise to apply the tools, the um, practices, um, to cultivate that particular experience. I was reminded about um, a passage in Way of the Heart that I want to read because it does help, help me in this idea of what I want, right? So if, if discipline so we, we separate, we move it from the um, external source, the authoritative figure, applying discipline um, to modify behavior for a particular outcome. And that switches to this sense of not, as Ajishanti talks about, not... Uh, abdicating your authority to a, some external person, right? That it, it comes back um, within us. As Ram Das said, it's um, demanded of me by me, a spiritual practice of some kind, whether that be journaling, whether that be some time in meditation, whether that be um, making sure that I read and listen to some truth um, first thing in the morning, that's currently what my my practice is, is um, first to read truth, because I don't, my default when I awaken in the morning, I'm not listening to truth. I mean, the, the firing off, the normal awakening music in my mind is, um, is not filled with truth. So I have to consciously make that decision. Let's get some truth in there. Once I do that a little bit, maybe a little bit of my own kind of mind dump, getting that cleared out. And then, then I can actually sit and do some meditation. Um, <clears throat> 
So once again, I'm, I'm applying a practice in order to um, ultimately modify my own behavior, right? The own actions that I take, um, not some external to do that. So we are going to, I'm going to read just a little bit about, I do have time. Um, yeah, I'm just going to read it. This is from Way of the Heart. It's lesson two, you create your own experience. It's on page 19. It's going to talk a little bit about desire, basically, and what we want. Um, but it talks about some of these obligations we feel we have. It goes back to the idea of having the two eyes um, and they are opposed in what it is they each want, right? And so um, it says, you need to take the words like ought, should, must, and have to, and write them on a piece of paper. Look at them, then light a match, and light the corner of the paper and let the paper burn and dissolve to dust. It is a symbol <clears throat> of allowing the energy that you have given those words to become again as the dust or the ash of the ground. Clear from your consciousness all identification with such words, for all of them are denials of reality. And in my practice, discipline was one of the words that I had written on that. Many times I have shared with you that you need do nothing. Listen to those words and take them into yourself as though they are your own voice because they are. I need do nothing. You do not have to survive. Whoever told you that you had to. You do not have to make everybody happy. Whoever told you that you had to. Whoever told you that you could make anybody happy. You do not have to abide as a body in space and time. Whoever told you that you had to. You do not have to pay your bills. Who told you that? You literally need do nothing. It is quite different than wanting or choosing to do something. There's something about that that I there's something about desire in there that I take all these wants that this ego mind gives me and turn them into needs, that I need to do this. I need to comply with this. I need to meet this. I need to do this. And the reality is that is that's just desire. I choose to do those things because that the outcome at the other end of that is what I have up to this moment always wanted to please somebody to get comfortable to get things lined out the way I want them to just satisfy this ego mind of mine and I dis and the ego is great about disguising that as a need and it is not. And I think I'm finally starting to see that, that it is a want. Discipline is about using tools, gifts, actually. It's not about anything from the outside forced upon me. It's about these open-handed gifts these tools, and they are not designed for me to ever beat myself up with them. They were never designed for that. It is this I 
that hijacks all that, that has done that. Um, so I remember when I, when I first got into recovery and I, one of our first tools was, um, writing inventory, right? So, it, I mean, and it's just, it's journaling. It is, um, it, at times it can certainly be self-inquiry. It is kind of drilling down to root causes of the pain and the suffering in our life. And I can remember going through that process because it was all, it basically everything started out with, what is it that you want? And we would start from there. And then it would be, Okay, so you say you want this. How are you going about getting it? And um, it, it could you could just really drill down into things. And then is it getting you what you wanted, what you set out to get in the first place, right? And you can really see the distance between those two things. And so I saw all this chaos that I had created in my life, seemingly, and um, and. And that recognizing that truly what I was after, when I, whenever I wrote anything, whether it be about a resentment or a fear or some trouble I got into or whatever, and it would be, I'd start out, what was it that you wanted? At the bottom of that was, I, just, I really was just after peace. I thought, I really did think almost every action I took in my life was going to bring me peace, or I don't think I'd have done it. The, the the reality was it was, took me so far away from it, it was just insane, right? And then my, you know, the history of an addict is eventually you find a substance that kind of makes that all tolerable, right? And um, so anyway, when I, when I got through that process, I remember sitting, and they're always talking about, you know, addicts and alcoholics, just, you know, the, the main problem is, is self-centeredness is selfishness is just that wanting you know like John Mayer's song <clears throat> wanting more it's going to bring me to my knees right it's it's wanting more of what is in the world that's going to bring us to our knees and I <clears throat> I remember getting to that space where I went well I still kind of feel like I'm kind of selfish but what has happened is what I so we're still these wanting machines, but what has happened is what I want is changing. That is the gift and that is the beauty. And I think for me, that's the main transformation is that what I want is changing. Um, the eyes that are battling for that, um, you know, whose desire is gonna win out um, the practice is what will allow the true I, um, my true desire to win, um, to win out. But it is through those, those practices. And the practices are, once again, it's, it's applying something from the inside of me that wants that, not from some external circumstance. So I just feel like I, I chatted an awful lot and it felt very disorganized on the inside of me. But um, anyway, I learned a lot. I came out the other end understanding in a better way um, what discipline was um, for me. And um, that seems to be the purpose. So we're going to go into our... Um, contemplation song this I went to a concert um Thursday night got to go see um Chris Stapleton it was a it was a really good show but the the real gem was this opener I mean sometimes you you get to see these you know the the headline events you know sometimes they're phoning them in to, to, depending on where they're at in the tour, right? I mean, if you if you get somebody at the end of tour, they're like, yeah, we'll go up there. All we have to do is show up and they'll be happy. Uh, but those openers, um, those guys give you their best stuff every time. And I'd never heard of this guy, um, but he's got had a beautiful song list. And so I'm sharing him with you. 
And um, this song is lovely. There's a line in it that says, um, well, the, the, it's keep, keep the dirt on the surface and love where you're at. And so I love that. It's like about, you know, not, not hiding this shit. Let's be, let's be real. Let's be on this journey. That's important. So anyway, there you go. Marisol's going to play it. Beautiful. Love where you're at, wherever that might be. It's exactly where you're supposed to be. I finally feel like I am done pretending to be further along than I actually am. So we got some time. If somebody would like to share maybe something that popped up for them, that would be awesome. I assume if not, we can um, go ahead and play our closing song and just move into fellowship a little early. Is that is that all right? Thank you very much. I want to thank um, Joy for reading for me, Marisol for attending as you do so beautifully. We appreciate that so much. It's She makes it look so seamless, but I've been on that end and it is not that easy. So she does a beautiful job. Thank you. That is so beautiful. All right. <clears throat> that concludes our time together here and we will move right into fellowship. So if you can stay and join us, that would be great. You've been watching our online gathering. It happens weekly on Sundays at 1015 a.m. Eastern time to join us live in the sanctuary. Visit our website, awakening-together.org. You'll want to click on online sanctuary in the main menu and then in the drop down menu, look for how to enter the sanctuary. Right there at the top of the page is a clickable link. We'd love to see you in the sanctuary and join with you in fellowship. Thank you again for watching. Also, please know that if you'd like to stay connected via the Awakening Together channel here on YouTube, you can subscribe and hit the bell for more notifications. We hope to see you in the sanctuary.